Going on now, the final farewell of Pope Benedict XVI scheduled for tomorrow in St. Peter's Square. It'll be presided over by Pope Francis. For more on what we can expect as we get closer to this funeral mass tomorrow, let's welcome in the Archdiocese of New York, Father Gerald Murray, back with us this morning. Uh, Father, great to have you back on. I, I went ahead and watched the two popes uh, last night on, on Netflix. We, we were talking about that yesterday. And just the dynamic between um, the late Pope Benedict and, and Pope Francis. Um, at, at fr first of all... What did you make of the movie? Was that an accurate depiction of, of the relationship that, from all accounts, seemed to only grow after Pope Benedict resigned from the papacy in 2013? Uh, the movie was exaggerated and tried, of course, like most movies, to create an interest in uh, conflict and also in you know contrast of personalities. Uh, but given all that, uh, there is a distinction here between the two popes, and uh, that's basically a cause of concern because many of the things that Pope Benedict did during his pontificate and promoted have been undone uh, by Pope Francis, who shares a different point of view. Pope Benedict was very big on defending orthodoxy, the tradition of the church, uh, to resist uh, skepticism and relativism in the modern world. Pope Francis, on the other hand, is much more tolerant of disagreement in the church. He has no real sympathy for the Latin mass, for instance. He's restricted it greatly. Uh, he's also engaging in a process now called the Synod on Synodality, in which a large part of the German hierarchy is, you know, basically calling to scrap Catholic morality. Uh, they want to change the catechism of the Catholic Church. They want homosexual activity to be viewed as good. Uh, they want to do all sorts of things that the church has never done. So what we have in some is uh, the passing of someone who was firm in orthodoxy. And now Pope Francis will see how he continues his path, which is much more tolerant of what I consider to be a destructive a movement in the church, which is to try and change things. Father, have you heard any, or do you give any credibility to the to the rumor? And Pope Francis says he's always referenced St. Peter, um, the, the, the first pope, as, you know, St. Peter was married. Um, and, and priests were allowed to, to be married until, I believe, the, the 10th century, about 1,000 years ago. Um, do you believe anything to those rumors that maybe he would at one point open the doors to, to priests uh, being allowed to be married? It is a possibility, Rob, but I have to say the Pope had that chance a few years ago. Yeah. There was a synod on the Amazon in which they were discussing, you know, letting married priests serve in the jungle and in remote areas. Uh, but Pope Benedict and Cardinal Sarah uh, issued a book at the time, a small book, de defending celibacy and basically saying, you know, the Jesus Christ who was not married is the model and origin and source of all priesthood. So for priests not to be married is a way to most adequately and perfectly reflect the life of Christ. So I don't think that's going to happen under Pope Francis. I know there's a movement for that, and uh, we'll see now that Pope Benedict's witness is, is gone. Uh, uh, he, you know, his writings remain, but he's not there to, to continue to give a witness to what he wrote. And Father, tomorrow, um, Pope Francis is going to preside over this, this, this ceremony. Um, what are you watching for as this historic funeral takes place? Well, the first thing, of course, was to listen to the homily, the sermon that the Pope will give, and I'm sure it'll be a tribute to Pope Benedict, uh, but we'll also be looking out to see whether he gives any indication of how he wants to continue to guide the Church in ways that Pope Benedict obviously did not. I'll also be interested to see, uh, you know, how many people come, uh, heads of state and other representatives. I know the funeral is going to be simpler than uh, the funeral, let's say, for St. John Paul II, but... Right. Um, I think there's going to be an outpouring of affection and love because he was very much loved. He had huge crowds who used to come on Sundays and Wednesdays to the Vatican yeah. when the Pope would appear in public. So I think we're going to see a, a real affection shown for a man who you know, was a true guide of faith in a, in a very troubled time. Father Gerald Murray, thanks so much for coming on with us again this morning. I look forward to having you back soon. We'll all be watching uh, tomorrow morning. Our coverage will start at 3 a.m. here on Newsmax. Father, thank you. Thank you, Rob.